gentlemen, and welcome to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Demon. This is the award-winning fan show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is Thursday here, which means one thing, that this is our last episode of the week before yet another action-packed weekend, and we do have just that. It is week six of the NFL, and of course, we have college football that continues on, hockey, basketball, I mean, really, uh, and baseball. (laughs) It's funny, uh, I was a guest on the Social Hour podcast Monday night. Uh, I went after Breeze uh, broke the record, but it was uh, funny because we both, uh, Dees Casillas and myself, the the host, uh, he we both came to the agreement that a lot of people think that like springtime is like the best time of the year because they've got uh, like pitchers reporting and then the training camp starts and. March Madness and basketball and hockey wrapping up and then football's got like I think the the combine at that time and so the countdown to to kick off is officially begun but I I would argue that October is probably the single greatest month or or time of year out there it, because a, a few things I mean yes fall is depressing okay we can get that out of the way and for those of you who are just like oh, but October it, it's Fall is my favorite season, and we only get two here down in in the southern areas. Okay, well, we get, like, two up here in the north. Technically, we're supposed to get all four, but we really don't. We get winter and construction. Uh, The rest is really hit or miss, you know? Uh, You're playing the odds at that point, my friend. But those of you that are just, (gasps) fall's my favorite. How dare you call it depressing? It is depressing. What is fall? (laughs) It's, It's a countdown. Fall is... A countdown. Here's a few things that happen in fall, just to give you some perspective. Um, September, which is the end of summer, okay, uh, but is also uh, the beginning of fall, okay. So it's that kind of you're you're on the fence there, you're teetering, you're toting the line. Um, September school starts back up again, okay. That's depressing. I mean, unless you're one of those weird students that gets super stoked about school, which if you're a college student, yeah, going back to school might be like, yeah, yeah, dorm rooms, frat houses, parties, football. So, it, it, okay, you can argue that. But to my argument, school starts, that's depressing, right? Um, if you're one of the unlucky ones where you don't look forward to school. So that happens in the fall. Uh, the days, they get shorter starting in the fall uh, that that's all they do up until the point where it flips back the other way and they start getting longer but that doesn't happen until what after december january and then that's when there's a new year uh, fall also means that we are three quarters of the way through the calendar year so now we're counting down to the end of a year and we're about to start a new one which means all of us are about to get another year older. So uh, it's just, it gets colder. I, I don't care where you are. It gets colder. It doesn't get warmer in the fall unless you live in Australia, and that's a, a whole different thing. So you go back to school. Your, your summer is over. It gets colder. The days are shorter. And I, I don't know about you. I prefer to be too hot than too cold. It takes too long to warm up. It's, a, it's easy to cool off. Jump in a pool, turn on a fan. There are so many easy ways to cool off. But to warm up, that takes some time. And I I feel more uncomfortable being cold than I do too hot. Too hot, te- your temper can kind of flare. Honest. But but too cold, man. <laughs> you just, you know, and then it's cold and flu season. That's another thing about the fall going into the winter. Um, fall leads into the winter. And the end of the year. So fall is beautiful because the leaves change and they fall and the scenery. And if you're in an area that has all four seasons, fall is a great season. But to my point, as far as it being the most depressing season out there, why are the leaves changing? Because they're dying. 
and then they're dead and they fall because they're dead. Like it's just, (laughs) there is no season more depressing than fall. I'll argue with anybody. As spring, everything's growing, getting ready to bloom and being born. That's when you have all the little uh, ducklings and the the deer, the fawns, you know, and the, the calves and everything. It's like spring. Spring is great. Like, I don't think you could say a, a single bad thing about spring except for oh, it's getting warmer. Really? Sure about that? Because I'm pretty sure when it's warmer, you don't have to chip away at the frost on your uh, windshield for your car. If you live in one of those states, that happens here. Winter also, uh, fall and winter suck because the changing of the seasons happen. Uh, I mean, you can start your day with the heater on and end it with the AC on. Or you can go, you can change it even a few times throughout like an eight-hour time span. You can wake up, drive to work with your heater on. You can go to lunch and have your AC on. You can drive home and toggle between the two you can have it be like ooh, it's it's nice and and warm in my car i'm going to turn the ac on while i drive home and then as you're driving sun will go down or already be down and it will be too cold now you've got to turn your heat back on that's spokane weather that's that's pacific northwest weather rains unpredictably i do love a good thunderstorm that is one of the things that fall does have going on for it uh from time to time spring has that too but if you <laughs> if you have allergies fall sucks <laughs> Because you spent three months of the most consistent time of the year where it's hot, maybe it's humid or it's dry, whatever. But there's not a a lot of variable, right? Like you don't go from hot to cold from day to night or really anything. It's always warm. So those of you that have like pollen allergies, like I feel you because that's, you know, it's more of a springtime thing. But so you spend three months of consistent weather fall rolls around and now it's toggling back and forth what's it going to do what's it going to do and so if you have allergies like i do this time of the year sucks because even when you get better you never feel 100 percent until the next summer because if your allergies flare up you're more susceptible to get a cold or a flu it's, just, it's miserable so this is that most depressing time of the year But in the smack dab middle of all of it is October, which I would say as a sports fan is the best month of the year. Hockey starting up again, basketball getting ready to start, football is underway, baseball is finally wrapping up, thank God, 160 games later. Um, So you have baseball playoffs, right? You have NFL in its regular season, hockey and basketball getting ready to start. I mean, I just don't think that there's a better time in the world of sports than the month of October. I really don't. And uh, it's just the the irony. The greatest month happens during the worst season. <laughs> so that's our, that's our opener right there for the fan show is that uh, I really do have a love-hate relationship with October. And if you do, hit, hit, hit me up. Let, let me hear your opinion. Is October the best month and is fall the worst season? Uh, because I believe it is. Uh, tonight we got a great show for you. We're going to do Fan versus Fan Show Pick'em. Jordan Endries is going to join me, uh, formerly of the uh, Green Bay Blizzard. Will he be back in Green Bay? We can talk about that. But uh, he's a kicker. I love my kickers, and I sent him some Fan Show gear, so we'll see if he has uh, received that and if he likes it. And then we'll talk about his Packers, my Niners, because they do play on Monday Night Football. But let's go ahead and do our... Uh, our formalities here and get this thing started off right with today's headlines. Headlines brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. If you want to customize your world, there's no one better to do it, better or capable of doing it than Ethan and Dynamite Enterprises. I was just in there today getting some stuff ordered for Lake City Comic Con coming up on October 20th. The first annual, well, first hopefully an annual, <laughs> let me try this again, Lake City Comic Con, the inaugural first hopefully annual Lake City Comic Con, uh, which is happening in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Nathan O'Brien, founder creator of lilac city comic con this is his new baby and i i don't think there's really anything for him to worry about him and i have talked about it. i will have a media booth there should be a lot of fun there's going to be a uh, fans um 
cosplay winner. He's going to try out this new thing. I won't be the host of it, surprisingly, even though it's called the the fans cosplay contest. It's, it's, it's like it's right there, but whatever. So Ethan is hooking me up with a, a nice table cloth, a table runner, and maybe a new backdrop. But we're going to look good out at Lake City. So if you're in the Pacific Northwest area next Saturday, please stop by the booth, say hi. Might be able to uh, take an order for the breast cancer awareness, the Think Pink uh, shirts that we're doing, the one-time limited edition. We're donating 15% of the purchases to Beyond Pink here in Spokane, and Ethan and Dynamite Enterprises are responsible for those lovely shirts as well. If you would like an all-black shirt with a all-pink logo, well, pink and white, uh, of the Fan Show's original logo, the one with the football um, Hit me up, okay? DM me, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we will get your order submitted. And once they are printed, you will be the proud owner of a limited edition breast cancer awareness tee where the uh, portion is going to a great cause fighting the good fight. So uh, today's headlines. Oh, and don't forget to hit up Ethan. Ethan at DynamiteEnterprises.com. He can hook you up with a whole bunch of great stuff. He is a money pit. I must warn you. I must warn you now. So headlines uh, tonight, Thursday Night Football. We have the Eagles taking on uh, the Giants. Now, this is a must-win for both because it's a divisional game, but it is really more of a must-win for the Eagles because they're the, they're the reigning Super Bowl champions. Uh, they are like 2-2 two and two, or 2-3. Two and three. God, what is their record? It's awful. It's awful. And I, I can't for the life of me figure out why it's so bad, but um, it's they, there's been some weird games for the Eagles this season. Uh, yeah, they're 2 and 3. And they will play in uh, New York, New Jersey uh, against the Giants uh, who are 1 and 4. Now, you might not think that this game is a huge one between the for for the two of them because of records like those, but when you look at the fact that you know, the Cowboys are 2 and 3 and the Redskins are 2 and 2. Yeah, this game means a lot because if you're the Giants and you win, and then you have the Redskins and the Cowboys lose, you're a four-way tie for first in that division in the most abysmal, sad, sorry way ever, but you're still tied for first in that division. Now, if you are the Eagles and you win, and of course that means that the Giants lose, and then if the Redskins and Cowboys lose, you have a commanding lead on the division. And as the reigning Super Bowl champion, that's kind of a big deal. You want to get back to the the Super Bowl at least the postseason just to prove that it wasn't a fluke and that you can overcome Super Bowl hangover, as they call it. So this game is big for both of them. If you're the Giants and you lose this one, you're pretty much done. Uh, one in five. And I know that it's still uh, anybody's race in that division, but uh, Eagles would be three and three. They'd be back to 500. A win over a divisional opponent would be huge for their momentum. Uh, going into the next week and it, this is a crucial week because the the Redskins they're at home but they're against the Panthers I got to think that the Panthers are probably favored in that one after the Redskins dropped one to uh, Breeze and the Saints Monday night the Cowboys they're taking on Jacksonville they're at home too but this is a Jacksonville team that is three and two and really needs to get another win because the AFC South is not the NFC East uh, and so we will talk about uh, that and a lot more. But yes, this game tonight is big for both teams, despite what their records may say. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. If this division is won by a team with a losing record, we really need to reevaluate where we are with the divisions and the conferences. I say do away with if you win your conference, you're in, in the postseason. You might as well just have the top six from each conference and leave the divisions there so that we can do scheduling, rivalries, and, and you know, the <laughs> whatever else you need. But winning your division, it, would, it wouldn't even be winning your division anymore. It just it wouldn't. I mean, you could win your division, I guess, but it doesn't guarantee you a spot in the postseason. And there's something to think about. That's like a consolation prize at that point, which is what they are. Division, uh, Winning your division title is a consolation prize. Because if you don't win the Super Bowl, then it's like, well, you know, we punched our ticket, but then that was it. So um, that is your game tonight. That'll be happening after we're done here. Uh, Eagles offensive tackle Lane Johnson is active for tonight's game. 
Uh, Adam Schefter reports that with veteran kicker Caleb Sturgis nursing a strained quad, the Chargers are signing free agent kicker Mike Badgley. League sources tell Field Yates and himself Sturgis will not be cut, however, as the Chargers will carry two kickers on the active roster. You don't need to carry two kickers. You just need to sign my man Craig the Leg. That's all you got to do. It's plain and simple. Antonio Brown on recent legal issues, quote, it has now been made public that two lawsuits containing false claims have been filed against me. The facts will soon come out that prove my innocence. My focus will remain on football, and I will not let the case serve as a distraction. And then we also have here, let's see, anything else noteworthy or good? Uh, Eagles and Giants tonight should be noted that no team in the NFC East is currently above 500. Let's say just freaking said that. All four teams have a negative point differential, and their combined win percentage is .368. It is the worst of any division this season. Uh, <laughs> it's the division with the Cowboys. I gotta love that. I really do. Uh, Rams head coach Sean McVay on Greg Zerline. He's probably another week away. I thought Cairo Santos did a nice job last week. Last thing you want to do is rush them back where they could potentially have a setback. Confidence we have in Cairo enables us to be patient. Uh, No practice today for Rams wide receivers Cooks or Cup who suffered concussions in Seattle. We hope that they have a speedy recovery, especially Mr. Cooper Cup. Uh, Eastern will take on Weber State this weekend in a big matchup because they are currently 5-1. and one. Weber was the thorn in their side last season as Weber did what only few teams have done, which is beat them on the red turf. So Eastern will be looking to return that favor this weekend. Kickoff, I believe, is around noon. And uh, that one... Um, it's going to be a good one. I'm very excited for for that. We had Coach uh, Cherokee Valeria on the show earlier this week. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the San Diego Fleet, the San Diego team from the AAF, the American uh, Alliance of Football, Alliance of American Football, uh, they have signed as their offensive coordinator uh, former NFL quarterback John Kitna. He'll be doing the offensive play calling. And he is under head coach Mike Martz. So that's going to be a very offensively minded team. I believe the, uh, is it the Atlanta Legends? The Legends team, the ones with uh, Lakers colors, purple and gold. Uh, they have head coach Brad Childress and offensive coordinator Mike Vick. So there are some notable names for the AAF. This is the one league like it that I would really pay attention to if you're somebody that is considering an alternative to the NFL uh, as a player or as a fan. The XFL as well. But this this league is really starting to turn heads and make waves. And good on them. Good for them. So that's going to do it for your headlines. I'm going to go round up our guest tonight, Jordan Endries, and we're going to talk about these matchups and more when we come back with more of the Fan Show after this. You're listening to the Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight... Farouk, Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show. Do you know him as Kevin from the league? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am. But the 1% do, they yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. (laughs) It's like that scene in The Simpsons, like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. No, I flew in just for your podcast. (laughs) I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy. Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like, Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on Exciting. top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Joining me now, very busy man, very active man, which we always love here on the show. He is uh, one of my favorite 
players out there in the league of the indoor game. Jordan Endries, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. How are you? Doing good. You get everything, the hat, the shirt, we were able to wear it and sport it for a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually wearing a hat right now. I've got a, got a game in two hours and be wearing it tonight, too. So, What league are you playing in right now? This is summer league. Uh, uh, no, it's just a, just a flag league around here. So, Gotcha. Okay, okay. Well, doing good work, though, staying active. Do you know where you're going to end up next season? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, sending off film, just hearing back, get feedback. So, well, it's a waiting game, and it sucks. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm trying to, you know, get all my kickers out there signed somewhere. Apparently, the Chargers uh, just brought on a, a kicker whose name I've never heard before, and it wasn't one of you guys. So, failure <laughs> uh, by uh, L.A., which they have a lot of lately. But uh, <laughs> you know, when it comes to the kicking game. And you see these guys, you know, it's almost like it's a habit for them to miss. Now, okay, we can excuse Mason Crosby because he's Mason Crosby. He can have a bad game. That doesn't make him immune uh, from or exempt from winning the, the butt fumble award, which he did last night. But um, when you have a guy that their name is like synonymous with not performing well, either at all or in pressure situations. So kickers and game winning kicks or just field goals in general. Like, is that, have you been there, done that? Or is that just something that it's like, you know, maybe they should seek another profession? No, I've, uh, I- I've been in those situations. I've been, I mean, in God's situation, I, there was a championship game I was in last year where I was, I was throwing under the whole game and then the pressure situation came and, Luckily, that was the last kick of the game, kind of like Crosby, that threw him in there out of faith, and I made it. I mean, it was, it's one of those things that even though you're struggling during the game, you, you got to make sure that your team has your back and keeps building you up. So it's, yeah, it's mentally draining to miss quite a few times in a row, but it all depends on the guys that you have on the sideline with you. So if there's a guy like uh, Roberto Aguayo, who comes from college with a highly touted you know, uh, background in kicking, and then yeah. he consistently misses regardless of which team he's on. I mean, is that – is there an explanation for that, or is that just, well, sorry, man, like the next level, you just couldn't do it? I mean, that that, that might be that. I mean, I, obviously, I, I don't know everything that was going on with, with him, but, you know, obviously he was consistently missing. And when in college, even in high school, he was consistently on point. So I – I couldn't tell you what his situation was. It was. Maybe once he got to the pros, that the pressure kind of got to him. Or, I mean, it, it could come down to timing. Uh, one of the other kickers with the Blizzard and I were talking last weekend. It seems like a lot of the timing issues. Uh, it could be a lot with the timing issues, with, with the 1.2 seconds that you have from the snap to get the kickoff. So you, you never know what what could be playing a factor with that. That's very true. A lot of the kickers I've talked to on the show, they say, you know, it's not just us. You know, we got to have a a good snapper and a good holder, and that communication's got to be pretty much on point. But you guys practice with them, right, to make sure that you've got your rhythm down? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we do. But, I mean, there's there's also factors that we can't control. I mean, there might be an injury to the long snapper. There might be an injury to the the holder, even, if if it's not a punter. But, uh when it comes down to it, we, we still have a job at the end of the day, and that's football through the uprights. Yeah, yeah. Very true. I'm glad that you get it, though. Um, and uh, I do wish the best for Mason Crosby. I don't think it's anything worth cutting him over. I think he just had a bad, a really, really bad game. But you're a Packers fan. Right. I'm a Niners fan. They play Monday night. So I wanted to have you on. <laughs> So that we could play fan versus fan show pick them, but also because I wanted to tell you why my Niners are going to beat your Packers on Monday night. So um, I'm glad that you could join me for this discussion. No problem. <laughs> uh, your Packers, look, uh, my Niners are bad, but there is something going on with your Packers right now that I think should concern a lot of people because in in the world of football, when it's no longer a game or two that separates you from the top dog, and now you're playing catch up with the Chicago Bears, and you lost to the Lions and tied with the Vikings, like this is not a good look 
for an Aaron Rodgers led team. And granted, it's not all on him, but my God, you could convince me otherwise when he gets sidelined in the first half against Chicago and then comes out and single handedly, single leggedly, if that's even a thing, yep. beats the Bears <laughs> like only Aaron Rodgers can do. Like, what is going on with this pack team? Uh, it's, I, I couldn't even tell you, man. It's, <laughs> it's mental mistakes, defensive missing assignments, receivers dropping balls. Rodgers isn't Rodgers right now. Obviously, with with the injury, there's some throws that I'm, I'm watching that he's missing, and it's it's not him. But uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you, man. It's a whole whole mess of things that's going on, and hopefully, they can straighten it up. In your mind. As someone who's played the game and you know a coach's strategy and player-receiver relationships, why aren't we seeing more from Jimmy Graham? Because it seems like in a time of uncertainty with your receivers, he'd be the most trusted hands out there. And he's a tight end, and he's a gigantic one at that. He's probably the next best to Gronk. I, I That's also something I really couldn't couldn't answer. I mean, I was at the pre, couple preseason games, and Jimmy Graham was getting really active, I'm guessing – now that uh, the regular season started, he's a little bit more of a threat. So defenses are focusing on him a little bit more. So maybe that's it. Maybe Rodgers doesn't have the – he's got the time. The whole line's doing a really good job, but I, I couldn't tell you, man. Maybe he's not getting open. <laughs> possibly, possibly. You just stick him on the goal line and throw it up, and he's the one that yep. comes down with it. That's that's how Breeze used to do it. So Packers, yep, yep. Packers are 2-2-1. Two, two and one. And then we have the Vikings two two and one, Chicago three and one, and then Detroit. Uh, I believe they have a bye week, uh, but they are two and two. I think is is the record for them. Yeah, I, I believe so. So it's it's close, but the only saving grace that either the Vikings or the Packers have is that tie between the two of them. Because otherwise, if you put that one. Really, in either category that isn't tying because tying's stupid, uh, they're either further behind the Chicago Bears or they're right up there with them. So that game, I feel like, is going to be something that haunts both of these teams for the rest of the season. Uh, the Chicago Bears will play the Miami Dolphins, and that's probably going to be one of the more closely monitored games as Bears are off a of bye week at 3-1, and one, and Miami really needs to get another win to keep pace with the Patriots at 3-2. and two, And then... Yeah, who, who would have saw that coming? <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, Minnesota hosts Arizona, but with how they played against Buffalo, you can't really say that, that that's a gimme. Um, you know, that nothing's a gimme with Minnesota even at home this season. And then, of course, yep. the Packers play my Niners. So what in, in your mind, if you had to look at it and say, okay, we're, we're going into the sixth week of the season, we're technically one game behind Chicago, who we have a win over, and then we're tied with Minnesota. We will see both of those teams again. You'll see all three in your division. But right now, what's what's got to be concern number one for riding the ship in Green Bay? Uh, I'd say uh, chemistry, man. I mean, when it comes down to it, you get that chemistry right, you, those those small issues on the field will fix themselves. Uh, a lot of people I'm hearing are saying offensive play calling. Are you a but McCarthy with, uh, guy? I, I'm I'm a Rogers guy. <laughs> You're a so, Rogers guy. That that's such a cop I, I, out answer. <laughs> no, well, the reason is because when Humley was in that quarterback last year, there was a point in time where the camera panned to Rogers and he was actually calling the plays. And Humley's offense clicked. But when McCarthy was calling it, he was running a Rogers style offense instead of a Humley style offense. So I, I believe that Rogers is going to be should be the guy to call the plays in the huddle instead of maybe even Joe Philbin. Fair point, because I've had this conversation with Packer fans before. Uh, last year, before the season started, uh, a lot of people were upset that Mike McCarthy still had a job. And I said, let me tell you right now, and, and this was, uh, of course, right after San Francisco made the, the Shanahan hire, and there was a lot of question marks around that. But I said, you know, my team... Yep. My team is coming from uh, a Jim Tom Sula, Chip Kelly tandem of back-to-back -back horrid seasons. If Mike McCarthy 
with his resume and his career thus far in Green Bay suddenly became available, I, I don't think there's a price you could put on him for me to say go get him as a head coach, but yet Green Bay Packer fans, some of them cannot stand the man, and it just ben, blows yeah, my I, mind. It, it, I, I agree. I mean, he, he's a really good at, I won't say developing talent, but he's got that uh, bring him in while they're young and roll. Attitude, and I agree with that. So you think but, uh, maybe a scout then, or like a coordinator, not a head coach, though? I, I don't know. I, I like I do like him as a head coach. Obviously, with with what he's done in his career, I uh, I wouldn't want him to go anywhere else. But at the same time, in the last couple of years, it's it has been a little bit shaky. Yeah. I, I will I will wholeheartedly agree with that. So we will we will come back to your Packers and Niners in a little bit. And there's a fun game here that I play on the show each week with a new person called Fan versus Fan Show Pick'em. Put five games out there. We pick winners and losers. There's no point spread. There's no over unders. It's straight up winners and losers. I haven't done too well for myself. I think I'm one and three at this point in the season, or even one and four. I don't know. It's something terrible, and so I'm trying to get right here. So the first game that you and I are going to pick, and as my guest, you get first first choice of who you're going to pick, and that is when the Pittsburgh Steelers go on the road against the Cincinnati Bengals. Steelers 2-2-1 two, two, and one, on the bottom, looking up at the 4-1 and one Bengals. Who would have thought 2018 Week 6? Well, my best friend would kill me if I don't pick them, so I'm going to go with the Bengals. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Bengals. You know, this is a game that the Bengals should win because they're at home and they've been playing great football, even with the injuries to guys like Eifert and uh, uh, one of their other receivers. It's next man up, and they've done very well. Uh, the Steelers have a tendency, though, that when it looks like the chips are down, they actually end up winning. Now, I think that there's a lot more going on with this team than just failure to execute out on the field. I, I honestly think that yep. maybe Tomlin is losing the locker room, but if that's the case, he's on the hot seat. He's playing for his job right now. And if you're going to have the same record as the Browns and you're against a divisional opponent, you need to win, even if it's on the road. So I will take the Steelers in this one. And, um, All right. I, I think that if, if the Steelers lose, man, there there's going to be a come-to-Jesus talk next week. I'm telling you right now. I don't know. If somehow Pete Carroll and Mike Tomlin are fired before Jason Garrett, there's something seriously wrong in the world of football. Um, I'll, just, I'll just say that right now. <laughs> um, the next game, then, this one we uh, previously mentioned. Chicago three and one coming off a bye week to take on Miami three and two in Miami, but Miami needs this win to keep pace with the Patriots, which it seems like is the story every year. And Chicago would definitely like to keep at least a one game lead on the rest of the division because, well, it, the, it's the NFC North and the, nothing's easy in that division. Uh, so I, I choose them. Yeah. I'm going to swallow my pride, and I'm going to have to pick the Bears. Oh! <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Um, I, I love Khalil Mack. I really do. That that, yep. that man yeah, is something special. Our team. And, and it's crazy because I've never once thought that one player in the game of football could – could change a, a team so much, especially on the defensive side. But my God, that that unit with his presence is something special. I will take the Bears as yeah. well. Uh, they're one of my few road wins uh, this week. But yeah, that's one that the the Bears need uh, in, in hopes that you know, even if all the other NFC North teams win, Lions being on a bye, so they can't win or lose. Uh, this next one, uh, this one is is a tough call because it's more severe for one team than it is the other. Now, we've got two NFC East teams playing tonight, and uh, if one wins, that's great. If the other, it really doesn't change a whole lot in that division. So the Carolina Panthers on the road against the Washington Redskins. If Carolina wins, then obviously they keep pace and tied with the New Orleans Saints, who look like they're playing really good ball right now. But the Redskins, man... If, if they win, they would have a, a nice little buffer there in a division that's been abysmal all season long. So who do you like in this one? Um, 
Uh, that's, that, that is a good matchup. I'm going to have to say the Panthers. You like the Panthers? I also. Uh, I like Carolina. Yeah, I, I like Carolina too. Redskins, there's just something weird about this team right now. I, I really can't put my finger on it. Um, it's weird because they should be better than what they are. Now, Breeze, Monday night, there was no way he wasn't going to get that record. And him being at home in the Dome, prime time on a record-breaking night, it just the, everything that could be against the Redskins that's not like actual injuries or, or personnel on the field was against them. And, and I think that that was... Yep unavoidable but they're it's still they're they're just not the team that they thought that they would be two and two is nothing to frown at but yeah i'll, I'll take the panthers as well um let's see then we've got uh the big one we've got the chiefs and the patriots and undefeated going into foxborough to take on the guys that do it all the time every time tom brady and bill belichick what do you think another road win uh chiefs stay undefeated Chiefs stay undefeated? Oh, and I thought this was going to be that pick where I had to go against my gut. I'm, I'm taking Patriots in this one, man. I think that is probably one of the boldest predictions. Granted, it's an undefeated team that you're picking against a yep. team that is yeah, lost, too. Yeah, into Foxborough against the Patriots. <laughs> but you're right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going against the Patriots in Foxborough. That's got to be the boldest pick I've ever heard in my life. That's crazy. Okay, and uh, and the last one, I think you and I can uh, both uh, figure out who we're going to pick in this one. Monday Night Football, 49ers and Packers. Uh, do I shock you and pick the other team? No, I, no, I can't do it. Uh, let's go with the Green Bay Packers. All right, so I got the Niners. So uh, you got Packers, I got Niners. You've got the Chiefs. I gotta, re- I, I gotta say that again out loud one more time. You're picking the Chiefs over the Patriots, which if you win on that one, I my my words, they're, they're going to be a little bit harder to swallow that next day. Um, we both like the Panthers, and then we both like the Bears, but uh, I am uh, taking the, uh, the Steelers, and you're taking the Bengals. Correct? Yep. All yep, right. That is correct. Oh, so uh, pending a, a tie, which apparently is more common than I had, had thought, uh, there will be a winner right. and a loser. What was that? I know. I, I agree with you. Yeah, uh, I really hate that there's there's ties in the NFL. Why? We we have things that we can put in place to prevent that from happening. It does nobody any good. It really doesn't. I, I'm telling you right now, you being a Packers fan – that tie with the Vikings, that is going to come back and bite one of those two teams. It will. And I'm pretty sure everybody, like we, we have a, a house really close to Lambeau Field, and everybody in the house even said, this game is going to come back to haunt one of our teams. Yep. Yep. I can, and, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's going to be that, that half game. It's a half game. It's going to be that half game that keeps you, that sends one of your teams on the road instead of playing at home. Uh, in in the postseason and and just screws everything up. So, <laughs> well that uh that that shared pretty well for the Packers in 2010. So it did, it did. Uh, the Packers. Uh, there's a lot of things that happened in 2010 that are repeating themselves this year. I don't know what that means. It seems like kind of like an odd gap to have, you know, an eight year gap between then and now. But hey, you know, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Whatever works, works. But uh, Jordan, please keep me in the loop as far as uh, where you think you'll land next year and of course if you need any help uh finding a landing spot let me know and i'll get your name out there to the folks that i know that could use your talents but uh, be sure to send me some pictures of you in your uh new fancy fan show gear and, and have fun with uh your your football and what you've got going on right now i definitely will thank you very much for having me on that absolutely dude it's a pleasure as always you take care of yourself tell everybody i said hello and we'll uh we'll see <laughs> i'll talk to you probably all day sunday and then monday night a lot of trash talk and then we'll see uh who came out on top but hey you take care of yourself you have a good rest of your night you too go back go <laughs> go back go that's where i hang up <laughs> that was jordan Endries of the indoor football league or uh who knows maybe he could be in the nal hopefully not the cif i'd hate to see that happen to him um yeah there's uh what's what's the best way to preface this what's the best way to say this there's there's things that come with doing media and and covering sports teams leagues and there are certain things that i am willing to uh 
put aside while I do my job and conduct myself with a certain level of professionalism. But the caveat with that, though, is that I am my own boss until further notice, until a league or a team picks me up. And maybe with things like this, uh, they're less likely to. I, I Look, and until somebody tells me I'm doing it wrong, I'm going to keep doing it my way because it seems right. <laughs> but uh, there are certain things that I will not simply put aside because I, I do not agree with them at all. And uh, last year, what the CIF did with going after the Bloomington Edge and the West Michigan Ironmen and seeing to it that they didn't play that season. West Michigan did, or, or did Bloomington. I, I forget how it all worked out. But anyway, they were set to join a league, and they didn't. And those players had to go and find new homes. And at that point, all the rosters were filled. And I, I don't care like how, how uh, dirty or, or whatever the other guy was in this, the IFL, and what they did. It's like you, you need to be the bigger person. And they weren't. And so with that, I don't cover the CIF. I won't. I, I Look, there's a reason that players look at the IFL and NAL first as far as availability for teams. And there's a reason why teams want to leave your league. Plain and simple. Okay, If you were really everything that you said that you were, and that is this great business model and whatever else, teams would try and be jump shipped, come to you. And that's not what's going on. So, you know, um, I try my best to be unbiased, but there is some bias out there. And when it comes to the game of football, I'm biased as all hell. Are you crazy? I'm a 49ers fan. I'll talk crap about the Seahawks every chance I get. Every chance I get. But at least I'm honest about it. I hate an analyst that says that he's unbiased, but yet it's like you know that they're leaning one way or another. Like, it, Collinsworth ever gets a chance to call another Bengals game? I mean, is it really fair? Whatever. I I think it would be honestly more fun if commentators had picked a team that they thought were going to win at the beginning of the game and, and called it like that. Some games would be boring. Some would be really, really fun to, to hear that commentary. If you had Al Michaels say, I'm going to pick the Patriots in this, and Collinsworth is just like, I'm going with the Jets. Like, I think it would be hilarious. I really do. I think it would be great. Great television. But... Somebody get offended, somebody be upset, and nobody wants those problems, blah, 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 blah. So, since I am my own boss right now, and I can sort of run things the way that I want, one of the ways that I wanted to run things is different from everybody else. I'm not going to blow smoke, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about something in the most professional way that I can. I'm not going to, like, swear up a storm because, I it, one, it's it's not necessary, I don't need to swear on my show to communicate the opinions that I have about things. I really don't. Um, but it is funny <laughs> you know, when I get fired up about something. It really is. I do I do love it because it's hard for me to contain myself. One thing I get fired up about is when um, my competition, quote unquote, or my rivals out there uh, do stuff for the first time uh, that I've been doing for the last couple of years. And they were the ones that accused me of copying their idea. It's just like, okay, like whatever helps you sleep at night. But you just started doing something that I've been doing all along. And it's really funny to see how it's uh, not even close to as good as my product is. And that is going to do it for this Thursday edition of the Fan Show. Big thank you one more time to Jordan Endries for joining me on the show. You guys go and enjoy your Thursday night football. Eagles, Giants, NFC East clash. This is like the 12th or the, the third of 12 primetime games that the NFC East gets because they're the NFC East. I don't freaking care. But make sure that you are following along on all the latest. And the best way to do that is through social media. Fan show. Facebook.com slash fan show official. Give us a like. Follow us on Twitter at fan show official. Check us out. Instagram, Snapchat, the fan show. YouTube channel is the fan show. Which I'm not sure if you type in YouTube slash the fan show if it takes you there. I still haven't figured that one out yet. But there are links to our video content. We do have a YouTube channel. I suggest when you find it, you subscribe. That way you never have to look for it again. 
And then, of course, your home base for all things football and nonsense is thefanshow.com. And if you missed any of tonight's episode, then make sure that if you can't listen live, that you at least download and subscribe in one of the many podcast forms that we have available to you, our valued listener, and that is iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. And, of course, we broadcast you live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Spreaker.com. If you can listen live, that's the place to do it, or thefanshow.com. Click Listen Live. And then there's a nice chat feature on the Spreaker part where if you want to join in on the conversation, that's the place to do it. Check out Indy's Barbershop at 7-Eleven North Monroe Street. Get a quality haircut and a hot towel shave. I need to go and do that. I'm looking grisly, but it's the fall. <laughs> it's the fall. It's getting colder, so I'm a little bit more hesitant to to get, uh, not get cleaned up, but just for my hair to be shorter and my beard to be less grisly. But man, uh, I'm getting grizzled. I am. And in October, it's hard to, to get a haircut, especially early on in the month, because you're not sure what you're going to be for Halloween yet. And I like to, to look uh, as much as I can like what I am for Halloween. So if it's if it's like if I was going to be Thor, for example, then I would want to make sure that my hair was long enough that when I cut it, I could cut it to that length and look like that. And uh, that my beard was that length and I didn't have to worry about growing one out or putting on a fake one because that's just dumb. And I'm not going to be the guy that looks like a clean-shaven Thor. That's stupid. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. And we'll see if I can dress up at La- at Lake City Comic Con. I believe we'll have founder Nathan O'Brien on next week. He's a Seahawks fan. We'll talk some football, some trash, and some Comic Con. That'll be a lot of fun. And Undisputed Belts unveiled, proud partner of the fanship since the very beginning that they have different colored leather straps now. I think all the colors of the rainbow. It used to just be black, white, and then they added brown. But now they have like red, blue, green, yellow, pink. So seriously, they can do whatever kind of belt you need for your occasion. Like if it's gender reveal, they've got a belt for that. If it's fantasy football, they've definitely got a belt for that. And if it's just an office pick 'em pool or sibling rivalry, well, you bet your ass they've got a belt for that too. So hit them up, Undisputed Belts. Go by Indy's Barber Shop and make sure that you check out Dynamite Enterprises to customize your world. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you adieu and farewell. Best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners. And remember, of course, it's all fun and games until you buff fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his own player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.